Good morning and you're very welcome to this morning's live. Now this morning we're going to be chatting all about home Wi-Fi. I know this is something that lots and lots of you have been asking us to cover uh, with working from home. You know we've all experienced um, the need for a good strong internet connection. Um, we've all had to do more Zoom calls, you know, even things like streaming our favorite TV shows, listening to music, using smart appliances. You know, we've just become so reliant on Wi-Fi in our home. So having a really stable and strong connection has never been more important. So this morning, I'm absolutely delighted to have Dave Dooley from Cable Kings um, to chat to us. He's brilliant. You know, he's helped so many people that I know. Um, he's just got a wealth of information. And what I really like is really simple solutions to help you really get the best and the strongest connection in your home, really straightforward measures that you can take. So thanks as well to everybody who sent in their questions. Lots of really good questions, actually. So myself and Dave will go through them. But I see Dave is waiting there, so I'm just gonna invite him to join. And this is not my area of expertise, so I'm really looking forward to this this morning as well and hopefully uh, learn a few things. Hi, Dave. Good morning, Denise. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm brilliant. Thanks for having me. Good, 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 good. No, no, listen, it's brilliant. I'm just saying there that I, this is not my area of expertise at all. I actually defer to my kids when anything goes wrong with the Wi-Fi in our house. So I'm really looking cool. forward to this, hoping that I'll pick up a few tips yeah, absolutely. Uh, from you as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Happy Brilliant. kids, happy mother, huh? Well, yeah, go it. ahead. That's it. Keep them, keep them quiet. And yeah, it's all good. It's good. Um, now, this is something, Dave, that we've been, you know, getting requests to tackle over the last while. And I think, you know, it's really come to a head now with everybody, you know, so many people having to get used to working from home and uh, not having their wired in connections that they're used to in the office. And suddenly uh, demands on Wi-Fi has been massive over the last while. But can you yeah. tell us just a little bit about what you guys do, first of all, so people can understand? Yeah, of course, Denise. Um, we started a few company two years ago. As we we worked in the cable and broadband industry, myself and my partner Michael, and we working in the industry, you hear of all the issues, constant issues that customers and people are having in their homes and their businesses regarding Wi-Fi and strong connectivity. So we we work mainly with Wi-Fi, creating Wi-Fi and wired networks throughout mm -hmm. home and business. So for people to get it's the strongest connection possible to all their devices and for, and people work from home now, it's, it's even more uh, crucial. Because, um, you know, there's nothing more frustrating than watching a program and your TV goes down. Oh, yeah. And it's a buffering, or you're, you're in a Zoom call, it's pixelating and stuff. So, yeah. these are the kind of topics we want to cover. But it, it, it's kind of all these have blended in together to, to, for us to create these networks. And, and, and as you said, people cannot live with a bad boy, but it's crucial. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It, it's but like it's, a, a new breed, a new, a new tray, but it's, it's, it's so simple, but it's, it's, it's a lot, lot, lot more to it, as I explained to you previously. But, Absolutely. Uh, well, it, you know, there. as I said, I, it, not all of us understand how these things work. So when they, when they go wrong, it's, it's not like before when you could just open up the back of something and have a look and try and fix it. Like this is totally outside yeah. of so many people's comfort zone. So no, 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 of this course. is great. And, and Dave, it's so interwoven into everyday life. Like I'm just looking around here where I'm sitting and it, there's so many things in this room alone that are dependent on Wi-Fi. So, you know, if, yeah. if it's not working, then you, you're really lost without it. Well, so Exactly. What's the, point of ha what's the point of having something if it's not working properly, you know? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, comes yeah. down to so many common factors in your home life, entertainment life, your, your work life, everything kind of. Mm -hmm. It's the Internet of Things, and it's the it's the way we're going. It's the future. So, it's I think uh, uh, networks are just as important as having a good uh, electrical or uh, uh, plumbing system in your house. I think it all comes down to that too. So, mm -hmm. no, definitely, definitely, yeah. brilliant. Well, just um, yeah, one of the questions I think we were chatting about this, and you know, is it true, Dave, that too many people? So all of us have found ourselves stuck at home with everybody in the house and everybody's using the Wi-Fi, whether it's playing an Xbox or watching telly or whatever, having a meeting. Does that put a load on the Wi-Fi? Is that going to slow it down? 
Of course, it's a hundred percent. It does. Okay. Um, it's a, well, it's it's a, it causes a, co- a congestion when when everyone's connecting through through a uh, Wi-Fi onto the devices. Mm-hmm. You're downloading, uploading, um, and 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 all of this it causes a bottleneck on your modem. It causes stress on your mm-hmm. broadband provider's modem. Mm-hmm. So if you, you if, for example, you're you're working there, um, video call someone in the next room gaming, someone's in another room on, on a mobile device, you've got all these devices connected to your broadband provider's router, should we say. Mm-hmm. So if someone's downloading large, con- con- it, 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 as I said, it causes a bottleneck and the queue then, and that's when you get the buffering and, and lagging because when you're, tra- when you're connecting through Wi-Fi, it's traveling through the air from the modem to your device. So you think of everyone connecting from different rooms, connecting back to that modem, it causes stress on that and slows things down. And that, that's what causes buffering and lagging and all these issues. A lot of people would blame their broadband provider saying, my voice goes crap. Yeah. So it's basically every home is different. So if, you, if the further you are away, the more devices you have connected to it, it's going to slow down and, and affect your, your, the quality of streaming or working or anything it is. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Great, great. Lots and to then- it, lots to it. There is, no, for sure, for sure. And then, like you mentioned the router there, so when you, you're given this by your broadband provider, should you change that? Is, is that an adequate device? Are some providers, do they provide you with better kit than others? What, what's your thinking there? I think that the, the, the routers that the broadband provider, that they're basic. Okay. You know, with the way things are going, you want to have your own network. Of kind of better better devices because as I said they get congested and, and they're not able for the high speed although broadband providers offer these large broadband packages gig pack, gigabit broadband 500 mm-hmm. meg sometimes when you're on all your devices they, they can't all they can't you can't use all that bandwidth because it, it's all in one room okay so say for example you're, you're getting 500 meg broadband a large load of it there in the front room yeah and you're working upstairs two rooms away you're not gonna get you're not gonna get full speeds up there. It's just gonna disintegrate through the air and, and the quality of the Wi Fi range on the uh broadband providers isn't great. So okay. you're always I think you're always better uh, adding on your own devices and creating your own network okay. with better devices. Yeah. So basically what you do is you, you, you use your package from your broadband provider mm-hmm. and then use your own Wi Fi to distribute it around your house. So every room you've got strong connectivity. Very good. Okay. And is that, is it a safer thing? Like, will you get more security by replacing that router? Or, you know, I suppose we've we all heard about hacking and this is becoming more and more of a concern. Yeah. Like, is that a good safety measure to, to go and do something like that? Of Dave? course. Yeah. Well, I always recommend you can put your own security on, on anything. And with Wi Fi, it's no different. You can yeah. personalize your Wi Fi settings, your SSID, you can change it to whatever you like, okay. in each home, and have your own personalized password. Yeah. It's also good for your own security reasons, but if you've also, if you've friends or family coming over, you can, you can go and look under the router and look for that big long password. You have your own personalized yes. Wi-Fi password in your head, yeah. which is another uh, pro to it, I suppose. But yeah. security, they, they do come well, well secure, with a good security on them, yeah. but it's always good to have your own for peace of mind and for remembering it. Yes, remember. Well, would you believe my son, my 15 year old, has memorized our Wi Fi? I don't even like, and he wouldn't remember, he doesn't remember what he did yesterday, but it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Fair play, yeah. Uppercase, Z, lowercase That's numbers. It. Like, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Thank you a lot to it. Yeah. Wi Fi is very important to him. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. No, that, that's fascinating. And then, um, so then, like, we got lots and lots of questions, Dave, of people who are building or renovating at the moment. So, What's your advice for anybody starting from scratch, whether it is, you know, completely gutting and renovating a house or building a new home? What would you advise if they're thinking about well, that? Well, there is this, there's a, oh, the list, there's a few things because we come across it every day, myself and Michael. Um, yeah. For anyone from starting from scratch, think of the future, future proof in your house, mm-hmm. right? So you run, a, you run a one decent Cat5e or Cat6 cables to all, the, all of your rooms nearly. And la- for larger rooms, you nearly put two or three in, in, in different corners. Because when you're wiring your house, you want it, as I said, future-proof. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And once you've got cat 5e uh, that uh, ethernet cables, let's say, going to each room, mm-hmm. they'll all go back to a center hub in your house. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so when your build is finished, all them cables will be going back to that center hub. But also, a mistake I see a lot is you need the broadband provider that's coming in through the installation needs to get access to the hub or a cable route or access to come from the outside of your house into that hub. Okay. So when your broadband provider sets it up there, you can create your network with all the um, the wires you've, you've pre-wired in and then connect them all up to a network switch and then basically your, your home lights up like a, like a tree like, and then you can just plug everything in and it takes a load off the Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Okay? But when you, but when you have, your, as I said, when you're putting them in, in every room, you can then c- configure whatever you want. You can add um, wireless access points to different rooms to get, get better connectivity mm-hmm. rather rather than because the old homes you know they're not wired for with cat five cable so this is where you see people using wireless devices which don't work as well as okay. actually having a wired network if you have a wired network in your home it's it's priceless like yeah right and we actually go. we chatted about this so a wired network is what you would have in any office with all of the computers of plugged in and that's why you have that stable connection so it does it makes exactly. perfect sense it's it makes perfect prime, sense. it makes perfect sense yeah a, a, a wired connection is always better than a wireless connection because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's, yeah. there's no lagging, there's no there's no stream, there's no uh, latency in the line. So mm-hmm. you basically like, turn on a tap, your that device gets dedicated. It's not going to buffer or slow down. Yeah, it's constantly on really. Okay. And Brilliant. the more you have a and and with, with the way things are going with technology, if you have smart TVs and um, uh, smart TVs, even the Virgin and Sky. TV these days require an internet connection. Mm-hmm. So everything's going to need an internet connection in some, some shape or form down the line. So it's good, yeah. to, good to have it there yeah. when, you're building, when you're building a new house, so to have it all there ready to go. Okay, fantastic. No, that's great. Really, really good. And then I suppose the home office. So that, that's the one thing. And honestly, Dave, like, I, you know, so many people now converting attics, spare bedrooms, you name it, it's been turned into a home office. So what are your tips for yeah. people who, you know, mightn't be doing a big renovation but want want a really good uh, functioning office and be able to work from home without worrying about, you know, messed up yeah. calls or whatever it is? Of course, this is this is uh, one of our most popular services at the moment because um, when you're you want there's no you need you need your dedicated bandwidth for your work. Mm-hmm. So um, what we do, we we run a cable from your modem from your broadband provider. Run a, run a data cable to and to a where your office is, and you've got to have create your own network. You can create a second network off your broadband provider, mm-hmm. right? So you set up a, a separate device, a separate router, let's say a wireless router, mm-hmm. and that will create a set a separate name and password. So when you're working, you're going to connect to that device and not to your home device, which all the kids could be on. Mm-hmm. Your all your other devices are connected to. So you'll run a cable out of this, have a separate device dedicated for your work network, and then you can you can either wire your connections in, hardwire your, your laptop, PC, printers, but they also have the wireless capabilities for your mobiles or your tablets and so forth. So brilliant. It, it, there's plenty, as, as I mentioned earlier, with the, with the packages. They're so large, the broadband. Like, mm-hmm. no one's ever going to use 500 meg in one house, but it's how you distribute it around. And home office is one of the main, you need a solid connection. So, uh, yeah. That, that, that's the rule. So, it's, it's basically to narrow it down to have a separate network dedicated for your, for your, for your home. Okay. For your home office. Group. That's brilliant. And then, so, Dave. Yeah. So yeah. is the same because I see on your Instagram you're doing loads of garden rooms and and so many people building these garden rooms for home offices. So running Wi-Fi out to the garden, the same. That's exactly the same yeah. idea. Then that's that's exactly it's exactly the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. People don't understand. People uh, are, a lot of people would try and um, contact their providers and get a second package in. I go, you know, people don't understand. You just never do that because. You don't want to pay for two bills at mm-hmm. the end of the day, do you? So um, with that one package, as I said, the same scenario, run a cable, run a cable Cat 6, an Ethernet cable out of your home shed and create a second network. Great. Okay. Which is perfect. And people, go, oh, and people always ask, will that take a lot? Will that affect my house? Mm-hmm. No. In fact, it won't. Right. You have plenty of money. Run a cable. You have a network down there for 
Denise would work the decks in your home, Denise's home. Okay. So they they are broadband down there, and you have broadband down there. So it's See, completely the, separate. And that it is won't, fascinating. Won't package. Yeah, that's really fascinating because people are saying to you, will it affect the speed or whatever it is? But actually, yeah. not doing that affects the speed if you've loads of people like you were explaining in the beginning, of using course. devices, pulling off it. So actually separating it out and dedicating it to, for yeah. different uses is, is a far better way yeah, to, to do it. Okay. Yeah, that's Different really uses, exactly. Because it, it comes back to the, to the large packages you're actually getting from your broadband provider. It's mm. just not being distributed. They don't, they can't, don't be affected to distribute far or that far. So if you run a cable out and put, say, X amount of data down there for them, that's yours just for your work. So that won't be interrupted. Brilliant. And then all the rest is left. That's for the house and the gamers and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. And actually, you answered one of the questions there because somebody is saying, uh, will putting Wi-Fi in my garden mean that I'm going to have two bills? So the answer to that is if you do it the way you're describing, no, no which is wonderful. No, yeah. 100%, 100%. That's great. People fall down that loophole because they don't, they don't know about this thing. I feel like saying, geez, don't do that, please. We yeah, can, yeah, for yeah, one yeah. off payment, if you, can, if you can have your own network and... Yeah. Distribute it wherever you want. You can have another a separate app, a network in the attic for your uh, 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 child's game, and they can have their own dedicated network. You can mm -hmm. have another network down there. Yeah, it's about it's about spreading out that that large pack you're getting from your provider. Yeah, God. So we're really not utilizing that large package at all. We're, we're just putting no. it in and you know expecting everything and to work and, 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 and hope and yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot more to it. The, the, the broadband provider will bring you bring your package to your door. But yeah. after that, it's up to you how to, uh, how to get it across your property and beyond. Yeah, that's brilliant. No, absolutely fantastic. And then just talking about the separate networks, and you mentioned there about kids. So, you know, having a way to maybe curtail use if during school time or even protect them from certain things. Like what can you do, Dave, uh, with kids and just parental controls, that sort of thing? Yeah, we 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 offer a range of different Wi-Fi solutions. Um, one of them, with uh, actually most of our products would have parental controls on them. Okay. So when you when you have an, you can we can put an app on your phone and it'll tell you whose devices is are connected to your network. Mm -hmm. So at nine o'clock you can not lock uh, remove someone from the network. Yes. Okay. That device can, is no longer allowed to connect to that network after nine o'clock. It's okay. bedtime. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so and then and then yeah. and, but you can also set a, you can set a schedule. Set Very up. So good. Peter's okay. uh, Xbox can be turned off at nine o'clock. Uh, yeah. So it, it's a good way to monitor who's on your network for another safety reason, and you can also see monitor who's using what bandwidth. So if you see someone using a lot of packages, you can actually tweak it just to. to to make sure everyone's getting enough bandwidth around the house, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. It does. But, Very but more, but, but especially, especially for the parental controls, because as you said, Denise, a lot of online gaming and yeah. uh, people, uh, tablets and mobile devices, which can actually affect affect us all if you're on it too much, too late, mm. especially the little ones. So you can, oh, yeah. it's good to be yeah. able to knock, it's good to be able to knock them off at night and say good night. Yeah. And and as well, you you can sit down and agree a schedule with them. So at least then they know. I like that that you can set a schedule and then that's it. You know, that, yeah. that, that's how this is going to exactly, work. Exactly. So yeah. That, set, really set, it, set it and forget it. That's yeah. Good, uh, yeah. That's it. No, no. Really, really brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. And then you were explaining to me, Dave, that actually it's the gaming and online gaming is a huge drain on on your yeah. broadband. Yeah. Gaming. Gaming is another like popular complaint we also get on these like young gents and women girls and boys like jump controllers I lost connection this most important game of the life and all this it stuff, glitched you know? this and is the gaming the this, yeah. it glitched the glitch that, that glitch yeah. is, is, is the Wi-Fi you're losing your Wi-Fi connection that's what okay. glitches it pauses and, and then yeah. it takes off again so there'll be a couple of seconds delay mm. which is very important in, in certain games mm. but when with gaming it's, it's, it's HD streaming basically so when you're, you're downloading content from the from you're just downloading and you're uploading, so you're using so much bandwidth and such high quality that it takes a lot of strain, it puts a lot of strain on your network. So, hmm. for gamers, I always recommend using a hardwired connection, whether it's from your net home network or from your broadband router, always wire it in okay. rather than using Wi Fi. Okay, okay, that's great, great advice. Yeah, yeah. brilliant, fabulous. All yeah. right, fantastic. And then, um 
just looking at, oh yes, and somebody asking the question there about, no, I don't know what this is. So mesh, <laughs> a mesh um, yeah. network. And then somebody asking about the Nest Wi-Fi mesh router. Is it worth waiting for the Wi-Fi 6 version? Again, this is way over my head, Dave, so maybe yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, I'll, I'll touch on the, the Wi-Fi 6. The Wi-Fi 6 is a new type, it's a, 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 a large, it's a new Wi-Fi technology which is coming, but it's, it's it's a gimmick. I wouldn't go and buy a Wi-Fi 6 because it does not allow devices that are Wi-Fi 6 compatible. So mm. you just better stick to the good devices out there. In the, in the longevity, they will come in today, but at the moment, I wouldn't recommend going okay. and buying okay. a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. Brilliant. Mesh systems, Denise, are basically, they're, 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 they come basically, sometimes mostly three devices. One connects directly to your broadband provider, and then the other two you can play, position around your house. So they basically they talk to each other. Right. So whichever room, whichever room, whichever room you're in, you'll connect to that device rather than having to connect all the way back to the the provider's modem. You'll okay. Connect to whichever access point, whichever mesh point you're nearest to. Yeah. But there is there is ups and downs with the mesh system, with because only one of them is hardwired into your network. Sometimes the second and third wouldn't get the best speed so as the main because they work like okay. as as they get weaker, weaker as 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 the uh, the mm -hmm. node goes on. But there's also capabilities of wiring in mesh systems also into ah, your okay. if you have a wired network. So if you you can hardwire them in, and there's also a port out which you can hardwire the device. But the, the, okay. the Wi-Fi technology, you can get devices from 100, 100 euro to a thousand euro just for really? them devices. So wow. there's, there's, there's different scales and different models and different different types you want. If you want Things to available. And probably, they are very good. Are they? Well, like it's probably though, just as you're talking there, and I'm just thinking anybody who is renovating or, you know, at the early stages or haven't installed, you know, haven't done any wiring at this point, really worth talking to somebody like yourself to get a bit of advice. Because, you know, you were saying as well, it's not sort of a one size fits all approach either. It needs to be kind of tailored to your home and, and yeah. your needs and stuff like that. Because it sounds like it's, it's pretty easy to go off and spend a lot of money and actually not, not have what you need at all. Nail on the head, and he's the amount of like the amount of hells you go to. People go, I've tried this, I've bought this, and I've bought this, yes. I've tried that, and they go, you, you'd have to waste all that money on the voices to take them out of the package, plugging them in, trying to set them yeah. up, and you can't send them back then. You can't send them back then. They are stuck with them. We've uh, the van full of them. Mm -hmm. people like don't talk. I will want you like I use them, but uh, I, I definitely they do. But we all we, we offer free advice like to anyone doing builds or you know it's better off getting it done right the first time because mm -hmm. after everything's done in your house and you come around you're going oh it's too late and I mm -hmm. should have done this and I could have done that and now if you do this so um, yeah. always we're always there for the free free and friendly advice so but that's oh, wonderful, Dave. Out. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And actually, just as you're talking there with people buying things and boosters and stuff, and that, like it's something I would see all the time in, say, period yeah. homes where the walls are so thick. Or, and anybody who's watched a, a few of these lives, any of the guests I've had on who've been in a passive house, they can't get connection. Like they're just running around like lunatics trying to find a spot that works. So what advice have you yeah. for, for people in those situations? Well, with the with the passive houses because they're so they're so uh, well insulated yeah. and like that's that that they trap all the energy in. Mm. Well, they trap the, to keep the energy in, but they don't let the Wi-Fi into every room. It doesn't it doesn't go out throughout the home because it's so Wi-Fi is a, 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 a radio frequency, so it's it's, it's blocking the Wi-Fi. It's going to decrease the strength. So mm. factors like that have got um, foil back insulation. Uh, as I said, concrete walls, fire doors, triple glazed windows. The, the, the Wi-Fi won't go out to outdoor areas if you okay. like. Yeah. Also, cosmetics, large mirrors, wow. ceramics, bathroom, bathrooms. These all are Wi-Fi blockers. These like they call wow. them. They're not yeah. Wi-Fi friendly. So it's a bit, that's a big factor. People yeah. have to mold them in the in the in the front, and then and then it's a bathroom, and then it's a, a concrete wall, and then there's no signal at all. And but basically 15 meters away. So that, they just block all the signal. And Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi doesn't bend around, it's, it travels in a straight line, so yeah. then blocking it, it's just gonna go around it. it go so through. what can you do? Is it, is it putting some of the, I don't know. Yeah, well, the... as I said, it depend, depend, the, the, mesh, the mesh systems work, but uh, realistically, the modern houses are all wired with CAF IV cables for this reason. If you have your network set up, okay, mm -hmm. you can plug in 
uh, routers access points directly into them. But whichever room you have on weak Wi-Fi, you have the capabilities of putting devices anywhere. Once your home is wired, is wired. switch Cat5 that, to your Cat6 cable. Okay. okay, yeah. That's the key because they, they, they can extend the Wi-Fi little plug-in extenders and power lines. They have their limitations and they're not a long-time solution. No, yeah, I know, and I've met so many people who've spent, as you say, a lot of money on these things. And yeah, yeah. They, sometimes they work. Cool. Most of the time, they don't really. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's it that they're not. They, 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 they might get you. They might get you out of a hole. Mm. And some of the power lines are decent, but with the power line adapters, you have one in one room and then one in the other room. Mm. That travels through. That travels through the electricity, the, the wires in your house, the air cable on the wire, then mm. signal from one to the other. So if there's an air cable that's loose or missing, and the signal jumps on it, and that's what causes it to reboot them, and they and they, they stop working after the same at the time. So they they be frustrating as well. So you can't, you'll never be the a, a, an Ethernet connection hardwired from this from the source, either from your network or from your your router. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. And then when it comes to the location of the router, Dave, is how do you decide on what the best location is for that? Well. Usually, the best place to have it is in a center location in your home. Okay. If you have a standard size home, I'd always put it in the center and up, up as high as possible. Because oh. the higher it is, it gets it better, better, better coverage. Okay. It travels through. And also, people like to put the modem maybe on a bookshelf hidden yeah. or between books. You don't, you don't, that, the Wi-Fi, it's not going to get out. It's okay. basically suffocated there. It, 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 it won't travel. Yeah. The Wi-Fi signal, so um, have it in an open, open area. I know there can be an eyesore sometimes, maybe a discreet area, but not in a press, not in a, in a TV cabinet. Keep it in the open because more the more it's blocked in, the the Wi-Fi signal is going to be weaker going to other rooms. Okay. Which causes. So yeah. is it better actually in an attic than it is if you've your attic converted? Then it would be yeah. The, 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 well, depending, depending on, as every home is different. Yeah. But a central location, the attic is, 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 is a good spot to have it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good spot to have it. But depending on the layout and shape of your house, sometimes the first floor is good in the center, in the mm -hmm. bedroom, because all the floors are wooden, so the signal it travels, travels down mm -hmm. to, the, to the room below you. Yeah. Whether if it, when it's downstairs, when, it, when it, the modem's downstairs in your front, the sitting room, let's say, mm -hmm. and your, your kids are in the back bedroom, You've got maybe two or three concrete walls and different structures to go through, which that's what it, it weakens and disintegrates then as it travels. So okay. open and high and, and out as, as possible. I know it's a bit of an eyesore, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's okay, nice fantastic. And then finally, Dave, just one last question, which I thought was good. Um, people asking, should they bother with a fixed telephone line? And... Um, I was going to say no, completely no there, but depending on what area you live in in, yeah. in, in, in Ireland, and um, sometimes, you, like, we're lucky enough in Dublin to have Virgin War Cable Network going from house to house, most areas, um, yeah. and fibre fiber optic broadband being introduced. Um, some areas can have to have, may only be a, available to have a, a phone line yeah. Do their line, For but if you're doing building. it, if you're doing a new, if, if you're doing a new build, and depending on what area in, you don't need it because it's kind of they're fizzling out because fiber is the new phone line. Okay. Own yeah. phone lines are, are a thing of the past, and for phone lines, in home offices you can use VoIP systems, mm -hmm. voice over IP. So your 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 phone your landline works through the internet. Okay. Yes. It's, it's yeah, the, yeah. If you don't, that it's actually the service that because Virgin don't use phone lines there modem their um, phone line comes from the back of the modem so that's not a phone line mm. the phone lines working through the work through the internet mm -hmm. so a mm -hmm. phone line I, I wouldn't i wouldn't if you're in a, in a if you're new bill i wouldn't put a phone line in there's no there's no need there's no need anymore unless you've no. got uh unless your, your, your granny might call your an old relative you know, it might be that one person that'll always call a landline but for other than that there's not really uh, any need going forward no definitely not brilliant well listen dave that is so informative i've learned loads um, good. Really, that's really that's good. That's good. Once you learn these, <laughs> yeah. And I hope everybody did too. No, and and just such straightforward advice. That's what I love. You know, really yeah. easy to follow and uh, 
really good practical tips that people can take. So thank you so much. Really yeah, hopeful. I hope I hope I hope I helped a few people listen and uh, to know where we are if they need any advice. Definitely. Help. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Dave, thanks a million and have a great pleasure. weekend. My pleasure. Thanks everybody. Thanks for having me, Denise. You're very good. Bye thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.